we were already proving with archaeological evidence that everything that was written about this temple was wrong. She was a mother, she was a wife, she was a queen, she was a goddess. And we are trying to find out what, what it did us. For centuries, we've been told the same story about Cleopatra, that she was the most beautiful woman who ever lived, a living goddess, a queen whose face could shape empires and bring Rome itself to its knees. But new DNA studies and modern forensic reconstructions point to something far more unsettling. Cleopatra wasn't just a symbol of beauty. She was one of the most important figures in all of Egyptian history, born into one of the most powerful royal dynasties the world has ever known. Yet the final pharaoh of Egypt may never have been the flawless icon history promised. In fact, she may have carried a dangerous genetic legacy a silent time bomb passed down through generations of royal bloodlines. According to newly examined biological evidence, Cleopatra's greatest struggle may not have been against Rome, but against her own body. And the most disturbing part? The clues were never hidden. They've been visible for more than 2,000 years, waiting for someone who knew where to look, for the doorway into the underworld. For generations, historians insisted Cleopatra's tomb was lost forever. They claimed it lay beneath modern Alexandria, destroyed by earthquakes, swallowed by the sea, erased completely by time. The last queen of Egypt, they said, vanished without a trace. But for the past two decades, one woman has refused to accept that ending. Her name is Kath Martinez. She isn't a traditional scholar. She's a former criminal lawyer who became an archaeologist. And she approached Cleopatra's disappearance not as ancient history, but as an unsolved crime. Martinez didn't believe Cleopatra simply disappeared. She believed the Queen planned it. While most researchers kept digging beneath Alexandria, Martinez chose a different path. She followed motive instead of myth. That trail led her 48 kilometers west of the city to a crumbling and long ignored site known as Tapasiris Magna, a ruined temple complex that historians had dismissed for decades as unimportant. Then, in 2022, everything changed. Martinez's team uncovered something that simply shouldn't have existed there. Carved deep beneath the limestone bedrock was a tunnel. This wasn't a symbolic passage or a short underground corridor. It was a massive structure, more than 1,310 metres long, nearly one and a half kilometres, buried 12 metres below the surface, about two metres high, flooded with mud and seawater, and aimed straight toward the Mediterranean Sea. Architects who studied it were stunned. They described it as a geometric masterpiece, an engineering achievement on par with the most advanced ancient tunnels once thought impossible for their era. Structures like this aren't built for ordinary temples. You don't carve almost a kilometre through unstable rock without a very specific reason. The scale alone suggests obsession, precision and secrecy. Martinez believes this tunnel wasn't built for transport or infrastructure. She believes it was designed to hide something. Her theory is strikingly simple. Cleopatra wasn't just escaping death, she was escaping humiliation. She feared being captured, paraded in chains through the streets of Rome, reduced to a trophy for her enemies. She wanted to be laid to rest beside Mark Antony. She wanted to be remembered not as a defeated queen, but as the living embodiment of the goddess Isis. And to achieve that, she needed a tomb no enemy could ever find, or defile. Martinez believes this tunnel is the doorway to that sacred place. Inside the temple complex, the discoveries grew even more unsettling. Archaeologists uncovered 16 tombs carved directly into the rock itself. But what they found inside these graves was unlike anything they had seen before. When researchers examined the mummies' faces, something caught the light in the darkness. Inside their mouths, where the tongue should have been, lay thin pieces of gold carefully shaped into small amulets golden tongues. In ancient Egyptian belief, the dead were required to speak before Osiris in order to gain eternal life. 
These golden tongues were meant to give the deceased the power to speak, to defend themselves, and to plead their case before the God of the afterlife. These were not ordinary burials. Martinez believes these individuals were members of Cleopatra's inner circle, trusted courtiers and close companions, laid to rest with everything they would need to announce the coming of their queen. This place wasn't meant to be a cemetery. It was a waiting chamber, a reception hall for the dead. And if the courtiers were already in place, then the arrival of the queen herself was only a matter of time. Yet, Cleopatra's body remains hidden. But another way to understand her, and her biology, has emerged far from Egypt. Because to truly understand Cleopatra, we must first understand the sister she chose to erase. Her name was Arsinoe IV. She wasn't a footnote in history, she was a real threat. When Cleopatra was forced into exile, Arsinoe moved quickly and claimed the throne for herself. And when Julius Caesar arrived in Egypt, it was Arsinoe who led an army against him, nearly trapping the Roman general inside the royal palace. She was young, fearless, and dangerous. Eventually, Arsinoe was captured. She was taken to Rome and marched through the streets in chains as part of a public triumph. But the sight of a teenage girl bound in captivity moved the Roman crowd. Their sympathy saved her life. Instead of execution, she was sent into exile, confined to the Temple of Artemis in Ephesus, one of the most sacred sanctuaries of the ancient world. Arsinoe believed that holy ground would protect her. She was wrong. In 41 BC, Cleopatra convinced Mark Antony to act. Assassins were sent to the temple steps. Arsinoe was dragged from the sanctuary and killed, a violation so shocking it echoed across the ancient world. But that brutal act left behind something historians desperately needed, a place. For centuries, it was assumed Arsinoe's remains were lost forever. That changed when archaeologists uncovered a strange and isolated tomb in Ephesus, a structure known as the Octagon. Inside lay the skeleton of a young woman of royal status. The age matched, the location made sense. And suddenly, the pieces of the story began to fall into place. Experts believed they had finally identified Arsinoe. If that were true, it would open the door to everything. Cleopatra's genetic legacy would no longer be out of reach. But then, the entire theory collapsed. When advanced testing was completed, the results left researchers stunned. The remains did not belong to a woman at all. DNA analysis revealed the presence of a Y chromosome. Cleopatra's supposed sister was actually a boy, a child, likely between 11 and 14 years old. The skeleton told a troubling story. The skull was uneven. The jaw had not fully developed. The bones showed clear signs of a serious developmental condition. This was not a strong or healthy rival within the royal family. It was a child shaped by genetic misfortune. And the most unsettling detail of all, the genetic markers didn't trace back to Egypt. They pointed instead towards southern Europe, possibly Italy or Sardinia. The octagon was not the resting place of a murdered princess. It was something else entirely, a mystery that still refuses to be fully explained. And with that realization, a long-standing belief collapsed. Cleopatra's biological secrets could not be unlocked through this tomb. The path everyone had followed reached a dead end. So researchers turned elsewhere, not to bones, but to records. Ancient texts, royal genealogies and historical accounts pointed toward a far more disturbing truth. Cleopatra belonged to the Ptolemaic dynasty a ruling family of Greek origin whose power was matched only by its obsession with blood purity. To preserve their lineage, the Ptolemies didn't just marry within their family. They married each other. Cousins became spouses. Brothers married sisters. This wasn't an exception. It was policy. Generation after generation, the family tree folded in on itself. Geneticists have a name for what happens when this continues unchecked a genealogical collapse. As the same bloodlines repeat over and over, harmful genetic traits are no longer diluted. They are amplified. Evidence suggests that Cleopatra's own parents were likely full siblings. 
her grandparents may have been an uncle and niece, or something even closer. Each generation tightened the genetic noose. Modern genetic models estimate that Cleopatra's inbreeding coefficient may have exceeded 40%. To understand how extreme that is, consider this. A child born to first cousins has an inbreeding coefficient of roughly 6%. Cleopatra's potential genetic burden was several times greater. History offers a grim preview of where this path leads. Take Charles II of Spain, another product of royal incest on a massive scale. His family followed the same obsession with purity. The result was catastrophic. Charles suffered from severe physical deformities, developmental delays, chronic illness, and infertility. His body simply could not sustain the genetic weight placed upon it. And suddenly, Cleopatra's story takes on a darker dimension. The queen who outmaneuvered Rome, who ruled with intelligence and charisma, may have been fighting an invisible enemy, one written into her DNA long before she was born. The tragedy wasn't just political, it was biological. He struggled to chew. Speaking was difficult. His body was twisted by deformities, and he died young. A life cut short by genetics he never chose. And even then, his level of inbreeding may have been less than half of what Cleopatra likely endured. By every biological measure, Cleopatra should have been a catastrophe. Yet history describes the exact opposite. She was sharp, relentlessly intelligent, fluent in multiple languages, tireless in debate, and irresistibly charismatic. She commanded rooms. She bent powerful men to her will. The contradiction is impossible to ignore, and it leads to a far more unsettling possibility. What if her boundless energy wasn't genius, but illness? Medical historians who have studied the Ptolemaic bloodline have noticed recurring patterns, inherited metabolic disorders, hormonal instability, and thyroid disease. Cleopatra's great-grandfather, Ptolemy VIII, known as Fiscon, was described by ancient writers as grotesquely obese, with bulging eyes and a visibly swollen neck. Today, doctors would immediately recognize those symptoms as Graves' disease, a severe thyroid disorder that floods the body with hormones. It can cause manic bursts of energy, rapid and pressured speech, sleeplessness, emotional volatility, and impulsive behavior. Traits that sound uncomfortably familiar. These are the very qualities historians have long praised in Cleopatra. Her intensity, her magnetism, her restless drive. But what if those traits were not gifts, but side effects? If Cleopatra lived in constant pain or hormonal chaos, she possessed something no other ruler in the ancient world had access to. Egypt was the pharmaceutical center of its time. Opium was used to dull pain. Kaifi incense was burned to induce sleep. Blue lotus wine was consumed for calm, euphoria, and altered states of consciousness. Medicine, ritual, and chemistry blurred together. And Cleopatra wasn't just a queen. She was a chemist. Ancient sources credit her with writing treatises on cosmetics, toxicology, and medicine. She understood compounds, mixtures, and dosages. She knew how substances altered the body and the mind. So what if her legendary presence wasn't entirely natural? What if her charisma was engineered? A chemical mask, carefully maintained, hiding a body slowly breaking down. A ruler quietly biohacking her own survival. Not in a laboratory, but with incense, potions, and ancient pharmacology. If Cleopatra's tomb is ever uncovered, it may reveal more than a queen's remains. It could be a medical archive, a record of treatments, substances, and survival strategies. Not a goddess, a survivor. A woman who fought Rome with intelligence and diplomacy while simultaneously fighting her own DNA with chemistry. And somewhere beneath Tapasiris Magna, that tunnel still waits, silent, deliberate, and unfinished, guarding the final truth.